In the paper about a week and a half ago, there was a big article about how maths and science in Western Australia is in crisis, how no one wants to do maths and science anymore, um, and how there's a, there's a shortage of maths teachers and 60% um, of te schools have teachers that aren't qualified to teach maths and science and you're not getting the right support and do we need to change the curriculum and all these sorts of things. And then we had a look in the internet and found that's not new. They've been um, all these articles, you probably can't read those. Australian maths no longer counts. Crisis in maths in Australia. This is going back to 2004. And if you look even further, it turns out since about the 1970s, everyone's been saying we're in trouble with maths and science in Western Australia and we need to do something about it. But it's always the same. So the question is, why? So what we wanted to think about is, what's it actually like for students when you're trying to learn maths and science? Because it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with what the curriculum is they're teaching you. And why is it not much fun? Why is it not that easy to learn in the circumstances you've got. So that's what I'm talking about now. So problem number one, teaching maths and science is not easy. So there is a shortage of really good maths and science teachers. It's hard, I don't know if you've ever had a really good maths teacher, a really good science teacher that you remember, but if you compare them to the bad ones you've had, there's a massive difference. There's more experiences that people come away with saying, God, my maths teacher is so hard to understand, you've got no idea what he's talking about. That's, that's because teaching it's not that easy and not that many people have a knack for it. But, even if you have a really good teacher, it's still hard to learn maths in a class environment. I want to talk about why. The main problem that we see is that you've got a big class of students and you're trying to teach them all at the same time. So this happens in almost all schools. You learn your maths or your science by the teacher standing up in front, giving you a lecture and saying, here's how it all works. Yes, is this how it is for you at your school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But how many times does everybody understand things at exactly the same time? No. <laughs> Never. So sometimes you're the person who gets it and you think it's too easy because the teacher's going too slow. That's usually Alexis. Most of the time you're sitting there going, I don't quite know what you're talking about. Maybe you needed to know something before you started learning this thing and you didn't know that because you were supposed to learn in year nine but you forgot and they never taught you again. <laughs> I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, but you don't all relate to things in the same way, but the, the teacher's trying to teach all of you at the same time and say the same thing. So chances are a lot of you don't get it. So what happens? Don't know the answer and don't care. And it's my favourite maths gag. Problem number two, and we talked about this a minute ago, um, accumulated knowledge gaps, we call it. So something that you were supposed to learn in year eight, you'd never quite got. Even if you're doing well in maths, say you get 80%, 80%, 80%, add up all those 20% that you didn't know, and by the time you get to year 12, there's bound to be a few things that you don't know that you need to know in order to take the next step. And that's the big problem with maths, is accumulated gaps. And I'll tell you a story about me at uni here, is um, I haven't done maths for like 15 years, and I had a lot of knowledge gaps. So when you get into a class and the teacher gives you, or the lecture in our case, and we didn't have 30 students, it was like 500 students. They put something on the screen, it's all sorts of squiggles and integral symbols and some of this symbols and you know, Greek letters and stuff, and they say, any questions? And I'm going, my question is, what are you talking about? What's that squiggly line? You know, what does all this mean? And the boys can tell you that when I met them, I asked them a lot of questions that were pretty stupid sounding questions, but as an old guy, you don't mind asking the silly sounding questions. But that's because you don't always know things. So the question is, how do you make sure that you can fill those gaps? And if you've got stupid questions, how can you, how can you ask them to somebody and not feel stupid about it? <laughs> Problem number three, um, getting stuck when you're doing homework. So when, uh, when do you do your homework? After school. Yeah. Where are you? At home, at the kitchen table. At the home, at the kitchen table. <laughs> okay, so you sit down to do your homework. Question number one. I don't know how to do that one. Then what? Next question. Next question. <laughs> what, if, what if all of the rest of the questions build on the first one are harder than the first one? How often does that happen? Sometimes. Most, Most of the time. Correct <laughs> answer. Do you train these guys well before you came in? <laughs> so this is a problem a lot that happens. It'll keep on happening all through uni as well. You get down, you do your homework, can't do question one, and you bug it. So what do you do? First thing you do, let me guess, you SMS your smartest friend and say, have you done question number one yet? Well, maybe that's, maybe that's I'm a bit old. Maybe you get on Facebook and say, does anybody know how to do question one? I'm bugging. 
Um, <laughs> if your friends don't know how to do it, then you're in trouble because now you don't have necessarily, then you go to your next best friend, Mr. Google, and say, do I know the answer? And you might find the answer or you might not. Or you go to YouTube or these sorts of things. And uh, what I've found is you can find most of the answers if you look hard enough, but you might give up before you do find the answer. Um, so when you're stuck, you need a way out to get unstuck again. So if you uh, don't have a family friend or a parent or a sibling who knows the answer and your friends don't know the answer, then your next best option is to wait until you go back to school and ask your teacher if you feel comfortable doing that sort of thing um, and if they're approachable. Or you wait to see a tutor if you've got one, but maybe that's not for a week and you lose all that time in between. So that's a problem that we want to try and address. If you had the right person to talk to, and if you had the right maybe friend in your group, for me it's a Alexis usually, who somebody who you know you can SMS and they know the answer, then it doesn't take very long to get started again, does it? Because if you've got a question about problem number one and you just have no idea how to approach it, but you speak to somebody and they can just tell you in two sentences what it's about, you go, ah, oh, that's right. And then maybe you can go ahead and do the rest of the whole thing, no problem. Maybe you don't get it, you need a bit more explaining, but half the time, once you get started, it's like a zip idea. And once you get going, you can keep on going. Number four, and this is probably another tricky one to fix some of the time, is lack of accountability. And I don't necessarily mean there's no one breathing you down your neck all the time. I mean, if you don't understand what's going on, who notices? Mm -hmm. And usually the answer is when you do a test and you get a bad result, then someone notices. But the problem with that is, what happens after you do a test? Next topic. Correct. You never, you're not doing a test to say um, who gets it and who doesn't. Okay, let's go back and teach it again. No one gets it. You go, let's have a test. Okay, you get an A, you get a B, you get a C, next topic. And if you never got it, then too bad, so sad. We're off to the next thing. And then three years later, when you need that subject again, bad luck. You don't know it. Bug it again. Same situation going around again. But wouldn't it be better if somebody knew in advance, or hopefully even more, more so, somebody could stop you from not understanding in the first place? So in a big class it's a bit hard because your teacher's not going to come around to every single person and say, do you understand this? And even if they did, you'd probably say, yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's, that sort of happens with your tutor as well, and we'll talk about that a bit later. Because if you say, oh, I don't understand, and then they tell you, and then you say, oh, I still don't understand, and then they tell you again, you, just you ask them a third time, <laughs> or do you give up? <laughs> so those are the four problems that we see. So we now want to talk about the normal way that people go about trying to solve them, which is either get a tutor, or the, the newest one is trying to get online help, or there's some other things like Kumon and sort of expensive sessions that you go to, but they're sort of once a term, what are they called? The intensive camps that, they, that you can have. <laughs> Uh, have you guys been to those? I never went to one. Pretty expensive and it's all, it all happens right in the holiday when you want to do your, you know, go to adventure work and stuff. But. So, tutoring. I've got nothing against tutors, by the way, and Alexis has been a tutor, and I think Chris has done some tutoring. I've never done some tutoring. Um, so, tutoring is great for the right reasons. Uh, there's a big range of tutors around. You might get a really good one. Some of them are expensive, some of them are cheap. Some of them cost 80 bucks an hour, some cost 20 bucks an hour, whatever. Um, and if you are the sort of person that refuses to do any work unless you've got someone sitting next to you doing it with you, then that's the best time to have a tutor because then you've got someone sitting there who's literally making you do it for that hour. If you're not that kind of person, then there's a few problems with it. Problem number one, and I see this is the biggest problem, is you don't need all of your help at one time because you don't do all of your work at one time. And when you need help, you might only need a little bit of help. And after you get that little bit of help, you're fine for the next, you know, 10 problems. <coughs> but then you might get stuck again. So say you sit down with your tutor, you do, you say, oh, I'm stuck with problem one, and they help you, and 20 seconds into their explanation, you go, oh, that's right. You could have gone off and done it by yourself, but now you're sitting there paying for a tutor for the next hour, and what for? They're just keeping your company while you do it, or they're explaining you something that you already know, but you're too shy to say it because you couldn't do number one and that needed that, so you, know, you feel a bit silly and all that kind of thing. So it's a bit awkward. Um, if you don't do any work and then you go see the tutor, then they're just sitting there while you do the homework that you could have done by yourself. 
So maybe all, they, all you needed was to you know, get someone to give you a bit of a kick and you actually sit down and do it before, you know, before you go and sit with somebody. So the newest thing, uh, have you guys used my tutor? No, what's it called? Your tutor. Your tutor? Your tutor. Your tutor. Have you used that? No one's used it? Um, it's, a, it's this online, um, have you heard of it? Yeah. <laughs> no? Go to Christchurch. Go to Christchurch. Go to Christchurch. Quite a few places have it. In general. In general. I mean, it, it, there's lots of places where you can go get online help, and, and your tutor just happens to be a free one that they have in Australia, but you can get them pretty cheap. The problem with those kind of things is that you never know what sort of answer you're going to get, especially with the free ones. They, they don't always have people that can help you with the really tricky questions is the first problem. Because they're free, people tend to use them a lot and you might have to wait. Um, people who told us about uh, using those free kind of services said it was a bit like posting on a forum and kind of hoping you get the right answer back and that sort of thing. So they almost prefer going on Facebook and hoping they get the right answer back and then going onto the, the service and using it. And nobody's actually, nobody cares in between your questions how you're going. So just to contrast to what we're going to tell you about with the my guru way of doing things, um, nobody's following up with you and making sure you're continuing to understand and get it. You ask a question, they give you an answer. Next week you go on, you get a different person, ask a question, hopefully get an answer. But... This is actually the best time, best time ever to learn maths and science. And the reason is because you can get the absolute best resources in the world that anyone's ever had for learning for free. It's all there on the web. Best teachers, free exercises, everything is there. And I'll show you afterwards where to find it if you haven't seen it already. Um, YouTube videos which are based on their website, which basically go through everything really clearly. Um, for free and you can understand it much better than your teacher. Um, free learning software packages. Um, your friends are available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, Facebook, mobiles, you know, email, am I missing anything? FaceTime, <laughs> Skype. There's a million ways to get information. So the question is, why isn't everybody doing brilliantly all of the time? If it's so, we've got all these tools available. Has anyone got an answer? Tricky question. Lazy. <laughs> That's one solution. No? Lazy? I've, I've borrowed the concept from the consulting world of looking at business management. Basically, having the right tools at your disposal doesn't help if you don't have the right behaviours behind it. And the analogy I like to give is if uh, I like to play a bit of golf, but if Tiger Woods gave me his golf clubs, I'm not suddenly going to turn into a world beater, I'm still probably going to hit it in the lake. So having the right tools is nice and it's good and it helps you, but it's the behaviour, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis that actually makes the difference for what results you get. And I'm sure some of the people in the room can tell you they did not have online videos and uh, all sorts of other fun tools to do their maths back in the day. So you can, you can obviously still get good results just with a piece of paper and a pen if you've got the right study habits. It's obviously much more fun now, and I'll tell you how to use those later. Yeah. Change behaviours, then you change results. So if you get the behaviours right, the tools almost don't matter, you're going to get great results. If you use good tools, it's more fun getting the same results and maybe makes your life a little bit easier along the way.